What was the meeting about? <laughs> Just work, what experiments to do for a grant. So really fun, interesting stuff. <laughs> Yesterday, I was recording something with Ingrid and um, Christy and Jade. And Ingrid at one point did this. And all of a sudden on the screen, this little thumbs up showed up, like a little thought bubble and then a thumbs up. <laughs> so and funny. we were like, what? What is that? And she didn't know what it was. And then we were, she was doing different things to see what would come up. And the peace sign made all these balloons come up. And we couldn't figure out... because. I was the one hosting it and mine wouldn't do that. And I was like, what is happening? I don't know why hers is doing that. We couldn't figure it out, but I really want it to happen again. <laughs> I wonder I how know. that's so I must've been maybe her device that she was using. She said she was just using her Mac. Maybe it's like a newer Mac OS. Maybe cause mine's not very new. Because was it just on her part of the screen or was it like the whole? No, it's just her part of the screen. Yeah, so it must be something from her Mac. Yeah. Um, do these get announced? Oh, I put in my main channel's community tab that I we were having the sprint today. Um, Mac devices have that now. Okay. I wonder if I updated my Mac or would it have to be a new Mac? Or it, can it be some kind of update? It probably depends on whatever the newest OS is, probably on some newer Mac. Balloon, yeah, balloons, rainstorms, fireworks, hearts, thumbs up, etc. There's a hand gesture that triggers each. Because then we were trying different things because we were like, what if we do this? What if we do this? <laughs> trying to get stuff. So the whole, because we discovered this before we started. So then we were actually recording the video. Ingrid was kind of like trying to keep her hands down. <laughs> Hello, how is everyone? How's everyone's March starting off? I'm a little sad because it's already getting hot. I just took Luna out before we started. Um, and it was windy, which is not my favorite actually, but at least that helped, but it was kind of hot. So I was like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the heat. It's perfect, I'm sure where you're at right now. Yeah, I think it's 66 and sunny. <laughs> Let's look at it. It's not that bad right now. I'm just sad because I can feel it coming. Let me see what it is here. Mm, it says it's 75. That's not bad. But yeah. I feel bad for Sean because he's been doing, he's been playing a lot of volleyball, but specifically he's in this one tournament that they have their games on Thursdays. And there have been so many games that have been had to be pushed back a week because of the wind and rain. Uh, and it's, I mean, mostly the rain and the cold, but it's pretty much always Thursdays. It doesn't make any sense. And I feel kind of bad because the people that have organized it have had to push theirs back so much that that means everybody in the tournament, no matter the time, theirs has to get pushed back too. So I don't know when exactly the date was that the tournament would end, but I think it's going to end up going into like May, which is going to be awful. It's too hot. Uh, loving the sixties in Georgia. Is Georgia humid or not really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was so excited that I got up to 60. I like how there's like a checklist of my dog and the weather. It's going to always come up. <laughs> it's only because and it was two things i started with it. i said i walked Luna and it's, hot outside. it's not actually hot it's nice hello sean will be joining in just a second he just got home from work oh poor luna he went to close the door because he records in the room behind me and she was like running and then he closed the door and she just stood there <laughs> let's see if i can hold on Luna bear oh poor baby <laughs> I know, poor Luna. Anyway, how are the cats? They obviously can't intrude today because well, you're not. Katya stole, so you know those like weird envelopes that are like built-in bubble wrap feeling? Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. apparently loves those because we got one yesterday and she stole it from the table and dragged it under the bed like it's a carcass. I was just sitting there chewing on it. <laughs> it's so weird the things that animals decide they want to chew on. I know some dogs will chew on anything. My mom's dog will chew on anything. 
Luna is particular. She doesn't really, I think it is cute because when we come home from anywhere, really, and we have grocery bags, um, she comes over and she starts sniffing because she either thinks there's a new toy in there or there's something for her to eat. And sometimes there is a new toy, you know, <laughs> but more often than not, there's not. And I'm like, I'm sorry, there's nothing for you. Um, but it, it is cute because she like almost knocks the bag out of your hand because she so vigorously sniffs it. Her winter coat has officially basically come off. There's some fur around her butt and actually around here because she hates being brushed. So she won't. I mean, we can kind of Sean will, you know, try to give her a treat. And then I have to like quickly brush her. Um, but she doesn't, you know, obviously want that up here or by her butt. <laughs> so she's looks so much thinner except for her butt. And her butt's like a her butt fur is like a different color. <laughs> but she's such a little diva. I know. I thought I, I remember so fondly thinking about when someday I'd have my own dog that I would uh, I I like had this image of brushing them all the time. Because I was really excited. To do that. She, I got a dog that hates it. But it makes me feel like a bad dog mom. Because then she looks so raggedy with like some fur sticking out. in the spot. <laughs> yes. Because I, I think you've seen before. I'll go up to her and you can just do this. And like a huge chunk will come out. I have some. This is not a huge chunk. But before we started. <laughs> I like how that's not a huge chunk. That's a pretty significant chunk of fur. <laughs> she's, she's here now. Oh, she's licking my leg. Okay, well, I won't, I won't go to that. But if you hear it, that's what she's doing. Yeah, uh, when she loves being pet and brushed. Katya will tolerate it for a very short period of time, but Jujubi will just be in heaven. She'll like roll over and stick her little legs out, and give you her tummy. <laughs> Hello, husband. Hello. <laughs> um, we're just talking about Luna and Katya. Uh, what's new? But. Luna's currently licking my leg, so. Because you closed the door in her face like a horrible yeah. pet dad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was told to hurry. <laughs> Just Marcus. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> um, the frisky yeah, fella everybody. himself. Yes. <laughs> Let me see, Roger, if your camera's still out. Oh, yeah. I think I have to swap to here. We got really up close and personal because he was trying to adjust, but then it didn't seem to want to do that. So anyway, husband. Um, so I'm assuming you guys are talking about weather, but it was funny reading this, the comment. I've been loving the sixties in Georgia. Cause I thought she meant the 1960s. And I was like, <laughs> like a historical fiction book. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. I was like, oh. We haven't even talked about what we're reading. So, Hey Sean, what are you going to be reading? I'm going to be reading Spy Familia. Yay. Volume 10. What's everybody else going to be reading for our sprint? I, where's my book? Where did I put it? I just had it. What? A, oh, here it is. Hold on. <clears throat> Guns of the Dawn. I am this much through. Um, yeah. Yay. Spy Family. Oh, Thunbringer. Nice. One Dark Window. I DNF that one, but a lot of people really, really like it. Um, the Wolf. Nice. That's, um, is that the first, wait, wait, what's the first one? Is that the That's first the one? First one. That's like the first one. Because it's like the spider, the something, is it that? Yes. Unless I'm wrong and there's a different. <laughs> Exologists. And Norse mythology. I've heard good things about the hexologists. I don't think I have any chance of getting that from my library anytime soon. So I think I'm just going to have to buy that one because it's the hexologists or the last Quintista. That one, yeah, the last Quintista because it's a buddy read. Uh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I'm not liking it at all. <laughs> I don't just like the writing. But I like like nothing else about it. And I feel so alone because everyone loves it. I thought I was going to love it. Um, oh, both good options. Um, reading Stephen. Whoops. Reading Stephen King. The Stan. On oh, the boy. Are you one. reading? Are you reading the like extended uncut version of that? Like 1200 page one. 
because uh, it's your favorite a, book of I'm all not, time. Ha! No, <laughs> not a fan of the ending. Long journey for that ending. I've had guns on that. So I think a lot of people, I, <laughs> I think a lot of people would really like this one. I actually think it's a really good book to transition into adult fantasy. I personally think it's more YA than adult, but it reads, it's very accessible. Um, and so I think for people that are a little intimidated, especially because it's a longer book, I would say definitely don't be intimidated, especially because what I'd heard of Adrian Tchaikovsky's works, I had this impression they were going to be really kind of dense and maybe the sci-fi ones are i haven't read those at all but this one's definitely not um so i like how accessible it is and i like the concept and i like the writing i just don't uh i don't really like anything else. <laughs> but we'll get we'll get to that in, in the future reaper scale all of hey which one are you on roger i just finished that one that one i mean <laughs> That one's hard because I feel like the setup is really cool, but then they don't really do anything. It's like usually with Malazan, you can at least count on the end being pretty exciting and like crazy magical good times. But Reaper's Gale is kind of a not because you it's like all of the plots that you've been reading for the last six books kind of converging. They're all kind of in the same place, but then nothing really ever happens. That's kind of a bummer. Which one is that in the series? Seven. Number seven. You're pretty close. To yeah, I just end. got three more. Are you excited? Or are you kind of like, I'm ready to be done? I think I'm kind of ready to be done, but. What are you reading today? Uh, I finished whatever it was, A Fate Inked in Blood last night. So today is Empire of the Damned. Oh, okay. Are you excited? Uh, I mean, I started it last night, uh, but like, it's one of those books that like, it looks thinner than the first book, but it's not really. They just did that obnoxiously thin paper. And so I could tell, cause like the second I looked at it, it has kind of like those weird like wobblies in the pages where I'm like, oh no, oh. it's gonna be super thin paper. And it is. <laughs> I'm guessing you probably looked at all the copies they had and tried to find the most perfect <laughs> pristine one too, didn't you? Well, first Did you go to was, multiple Barnes and Nobles? No, I just went to one, but it was very hard to find it cause they had put it in YA for some reason, which it's full of swearing, gore, and schmexy times, which I don't really think of as like being like top candidates for YA. Like it literally starts with like a threesome, like on the first scene. So I was like, huh, okay. Very young adult. <laughs> but they had like- You weren't copies. doing that in high school? <laughs> they had like 15 <laughs> copies. So I was able to, I think I ended up taking the book from one and the dust jacket from a different one, <laughs> like swapping it out. I don't think I'm that particular. I mean, I if think, I'm going to pay like $30 for a hardback book. Like, mm. I think I'll do that if I'm at a used bookstore and I'm like, which one's less damaged? <laughs> um, or sometimes they're not the exact same prices. So I'm like, okay, well, this one's, especially if you have something that's a trade paperback and another one that's paperback, but just a little salt, uh, taller. And I'm like, is it worth the $3 difference or whatever? Or how easy is it to find other books in the series that are this size? That kind of thing. But you're definitely way more intense. Um, I like this false quote. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, hello. Um. It's pretty fun, quirky so far. I saw somebody in talking about um, the video we did about things that we don't like and things that we do like. Those are two separate videos. But um, for the romance in fantasy books, somebody just commented, all of you need to read The Hexologist because it doesn't have a lot of the annoying things or it does have one of the things we want. And that surprised me because I don't think I would have expected that from that book based off the synopsis. Unlike um, a fate inked in blood, which had every fantasy romance trope. The dude is huge. Did. His thing is huge. She's a very small woman. <laughs> she's thin. I don't think she's short though, right? It's just that he's tall. He's huge. That's all I know. Everything about him is huge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's Sean's contribution. <laughs> um, it did have, a, it did definitely have some, some tropes uh there's the whole like oh i guess we're gonna have to make out so that nobody pays attention to us thing which i'm like why is this always a thing in stories um i still enjoyed the book 
though. Um, I think it's probably like a 3.54 star. Like it was entertaining enough and some of the world building elements are cool. Like I'll read the next one, but the romance was like pretty cliche, I, stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt similarly. Um, and many plots. Oh, for, for Reaper for scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, um, I don't know. I feel like I've been having such a weird experience with Malazan because I'm like not that confused most of the time. Like I can tell what I am not supposed to know something, but like keeping track of people is not that hard for me for whatever reason. Because I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, we have Carsa Orlong who's now here. We have um, Ikarium is here. We're meeting up with the people from Midnight Tide. So like, I don't know. Just a, a bunch of stuff. I mean, almost all of the people that you've met that are still alive are converging in that book. And maybe even some that have been resurrected, right? <laughs> you never know. Um, was this question in regards to Molassin? Probably. About the broken binding? So if it is, Roger, are you getting the broken binding editions? Or is that for no. someone else? No. Are there, there's going to be broken binding editions in Molassin? Yeah, yeah, they, they mean, the all of them or one. some of them? I think, I think all of them. All of them. They do look quite cool. All of it. them? That's There's nuts. Tanya. Yeah. Um, I know we just kind of answered this. Yeah, I thought it was enjoyable. Not I mean, the most elements are cool. It felt very like God of Worry with children of different deities having different powers and like that kind of stuff. It was fun. I think fun. Yeah, it was it was entertaining. Not a new favorite. I don't think I felt exceptionally moved um by it. I did like the that cute sparkly pages though on like the Barnes and Noble edition or whatever it is. It's like, like shimmery and also sparkly. I liked it too. And you, it's a color you like. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't in Percy Jackson. <laughs> I'm assuming this is a callback to the, uh, the comment about how empire of the dam starts. <laughs> yeah. There's some cliche things. I would say overall though, the story, there was still, a plot and there was still interest like roger said interesting world building i think the um, plot was fun it was like interesting and different from what i would normally expect just the actual romance itself was like oh, okay yeah it was pretty run of the mill i'd say um first three times <laughs> oh no well 10 in the main series are all 10 coming out at once i think they're coming out one at a time i don't think they do series all at once pretty much ever i mean i thought I about it because i was like i mean they do look cool but i was like i'm never rereading this. like i cannot see me rereading this series voluntarily only if someone's forcing you to if you're well, under funny duress i was originally supposed to be reading reaper's guild with angela and she gave up because she's like oh i haven't read this in a year and a half i don't remember so she started the series over and she's like i'm just gonna go back to and i was like excuse me absolutely not no I hey, unrelated any pickleball players in the in the comments here. Pickleball? Yeah, pickleball. Sweet. <laughs> Sean and I have been playing a lot of pickleball. I actually was wearing um in that video I was telling you I recorded with Ingrid and Christy and Jade. I was wearing a pickleball shirt because we were supposed to go play with some people, but then it got canceled. Um canceled. Marcus, we've played pickleball with Marcus and beat him. <laughs> Shots fired. I texted my mom the other day. I bet I could find the text. Um, uh, because I finally defeated Sean, which is a big deal because for people that don't know, Sean's athletic and he's also much taller than me and he has a much longer reach than me. And he's played hey, tennis. Uh, Roger is like much taller than me. Okay. Yeah, so you like... haven't, I'm sure if you played him <laughs> And he beat you, you'd be like, well, him being 6'7 probably has something to do with it. Roger wouldn't beat me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, I'm not competitive enough to care. <laughs> uh, let's see. I put March 6 at roughly 8.15. I defeated Sean at Pickleball. <laughs> my mom was said yes in all caps with a bunch of exclamation points. Because <laughs> we played with my mom. She's the one that introduced us to it. Um, and... Typically, I think a lot of people play doubles, but Sean and I play a lot, just the two of us, and it's just, man, it's pretty unfair. <laughs> but it's still fun. I still always have a good time. But he's played tennis before, so he can put spin on the ball and stuff, too, and I'm just like... <laughs> um, trying to convince the hubby to play. It's so fun! 
don't play with Sean and Danielle. <laughs> Why? If you don't want to get beat. Not familiar with pickleball. I'm picturing badminton, but you're hitting a pickle. That's exactly. So it. it's a wiffle ball, which I was pretty annoyed about at first because I've played some racquetball before and those, you know, you can make stale, which is fun. And then with pickleball, well, let me rephrase. In racquetball, you can hit it really hard and you're not necessarily punished for it. In pickleball, you have to be a little bit more uh, careful because you, the court's not that big. So it's really easy to hit it out. Also, uh, racquetball, the ball stays inside. There's no out of bounds yeah. in racquetball. You know, that's I kind think, of a big. I think on like certain things, it's been a long time, but if I'm not mistaken, certain returns on serves like can't hit the. Yeah, I don't think it can hit the back wall, right? On a remember. serve, you can't hit the back. And I thought yeah. it was like the receiver can't hit the side or something. I don't remember. You have to like, I think it has to go from the front to pass the line. Um, also, he did not let me win. He didn't. He was Sean's behind. Not that much of a gentleman. No, he's not. He's not at all. As he's trying to like tease me and be competitive with me out of nowhere. He's like, you couldn't beat me. I'm like, okay. I also think that I'll just trip um, him. I'll throw him out of the. the you could do that. Not allowed. <laughs> I'm competitive, also, and if like it was obvious, Sean let me win. I would be like, well, well I guess we're not playing anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't like it. I would rather play and always lose than to have Sean uh, let me win. That would upset me. Noted. You know that already. Just get out of here. Don't feed into this. You know. Um, Batman with a Bitcoin yellow, because if you're competitive, they'll crush you. Okay, Marcus is really that's the thing. Marcus is very competitive, he does not like to lose, so he uh, he doesn't like to play us because we beat him. <laughs> um, playing with a blitz ball, they're like, Well, we'll make a crazy spin. <laughs> yeah, you just have to do the jack shot, you know, and then you'll be all good. <laughs> Do like a flip, hit the ball like that. Anyway, yeah, pickleball is fun. I'll play Marcus anytime. Marcus, I'll play you anytime. Yeah, we need to play again. Yeah. <laughs> He's been leveling up. We've been leveling up too. So I look forward to It'll be fun. We played with my mom. That was fun. Not, I mean, I know I said Sean and I played with my mom, but Marcus played with us. You've retired from pickleball. Oh, come on, Marcus. Don't Did you guys loser. just torture your mother? Does Sean go as competitive with your mom as he does with you? You know, what's funny is like the first time we played, uh, I had to get used to the ball because I'm used to like a tennis bounce. But after that, I was like, all right, game on. And I did, I did not hold back. Right. And, and you know, to be fair, your mom, you know, your mom plays a lot. Yeah, she plays a lot. She's she's she can hold her own. And she she'll play with other people. Oh, we did, but you're okay. <laughs> um, I think in the chat, Sean's reading Spy Family, Roger's reading Empire of the Damned, I'm reading Guns. Which Empire. I'm what are you reading? I'm impressed with how many illustrations they put in the Empire of the Whatever books. And like they're pretty nice. Yeah. And there's like for, tons of them, like probably 50 on special edition. Yeah. For just the standard hardback. Sean the special almost, editions are full color illustration. Uh, um, also to answer your question a little more thoroughly, Sean, like almost hit my mom with a pickleball. So that should answer. Sean. Your question. I mean, he did hit me. I did. I was about to say, I did hit you. <laughs> the first day that I'd ever played, he really whacked it and like it hit my leg and I had a big old mark. Um, and he almost, the next time we played with my mom, he almost hit her, like, I feel like right, like, a, up like a body shot. <laughs> so, yeah. No, yeah. No mercy. Exactly. Um, oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. I I will look forward. How far to are you now? Um, pretty. Oh, geez, like 60, 70%. Yeah. Um is good it isn't what i thought it was gonna be it has a nice female lead i find her fine Adequate. yeah <laughs> oh oh rereading guards of the moon we talked about how angela was restarting i mean she season. must have gotten sucked into it with her <laughs> oh i finally got around to winter night the second one 
I, I was supposed the to buddy, throw him a tower or whatever. I was supposed to buddy read that last year and I just never got around to it, but I finally picked it up and I did like that one. <laughs> book three um, is my favorite. I think you'll like book three too, because then you actually go full into the folklore and the like folklore world and so it's a lot cooler. Um yeah, I'm looking forward because I know I think Jesse may feel similarly where she really likes the third one also. I, I liked the favorite. second one, but like like Mulan esque stories aren't my favorite thing ever. Yeah. Which well, is I do much the second book. <laughs> speaking of um leads, I really like her, Vasya in um Vasa in that Lisa Petrovna or something. Something like that, yeah. I was you know called who... her Vaseline when I was reading. <laughs> Vaseline. <laughs> yeah, I really like I'm really excited for the third one. Um Sean, speaking of great characters, uh, since he's picking up Spy Family, I just did a tier ranking of Spy Family, but then also soon in the next few weeks, Sean and I did a video with uh our friend Enrique, who you know, Roger, and Christy and Sarah, where we were tier ranking spy family characters. You need to check out Spy Family. That's a general you to everybody, but specifically you, Roger. It's so fun and ridiculous and stupid, but it's so cute. It's Is so it a manga cute. and an anime, or do, do you like yeah. one version over the better over the other? Not necessarily. The They're thing? pretty much the same. Yeah, um, it's pretty entertaining. We've it's been watching crazy. Love Is Blind, and these people are crazy. Are you gonna watch the reunion? Oh yeah, yeah. the reunions today. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we so doing messy. this? It's gonna oh be so messy. <laughs> just I'm, during I'm... the sprint, just watch the reunion. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have Spy Family up and be like, because <laughs> we went back and watched season one. Because we only we've only watched the Brazilian versions of it. Because Alex and I sometimes watch Brazilian shows so that he can talk to me in Portuguese and tell me random things about Brazil. And so, like, we had only watched the three seasons in Portuguese, and then this was the first one we had seen in English. And I was like, oh, my God, these people are freaking crazy. I thought the Brazilians were crazy. They got nothing I've heard, on them. I've heard that, if it's if I'm not mistaken, I think there's one for Japan. I've heard that one's nice. And that a lot more people will call it off earlier if they are like, I don't think this is working. I could be wrong. Maybe it's just... Uh, maybe it's just as messy. Well, we were just started the, I don't know if we're on the second season or something, but there's a guy who's an atheist and a woman who is very Christian and wants to raise her kids in the church. And they decide to propose to each other and try to get married. I'm like, how is that ever going to work? That's pretty uh, irreconcilable differences. In if, the second season, Shayna, is that who you're talking about? Maybe. She's blonde. She, like, dips, she dips on him. They go on the honeymoon together and she just leaves him and doesn't say anything. Wild. Uh, you'll have to tell me. I didn't really watch the other seasons. I just kind of like know of them. Um, but I feel like I like watching that show so I can watch people react to the show. <laughs> so Aaron and Joe, for anybody that enjoys reaction channels, Aaron and Joe's reactions to the show are pretty funny. Um, they're very entertaining. So pretty much Sean and I will watch and we'll be like, when are Aaron and Joe putting up a video for this? Because their reactions are always really funny. They just make fun of everybody the whole time, though. It's That's all they do. Is they roast everyone. And it's kind of sad, but it's well, funny. So, I, I, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a love is blind fest. <laughs> but I, I will say I was very confused because what we started with not the first season, the third season. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. remember. But I didn't know, like, proposing was like a part of it so like the first guy that proposed i was like i got just proposed to her after like a couple after, like, days three or like four what days. yeah like i i was like so confused and then i was more confused when she's like sure and i was like what's wrong with these people and then as more people started doing it, i was like is that the point of the show i didn't realize that was the point of the show so i thought they were just like dating without seeing each other i didn't know it was like i think let's sean, get married i think sean likes the show more than I like this. That's show. very possible. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty good trash drama TV of just people being messy. I feel kind of bad because like I'm the like the one guy. What was it? It was in the most recent season, right? Where the guy was like, "Oh no, we were just talking for five hours in the parking lot. I shared oh. my location," and she was like, "Um, yeah, I know you did because you were on the other side of town at her house. No, there's like an alley and a thing." And... I okay. We really will have to segue because otherwise we'll get into a lot of this ridiculous drama. But apparently his 
former um, girlfriend uh, said that that was how she found out that he was seeing someone else was like location sharing <laughs> did the exact same thing i don't know if it's true it doesn't matter it's as if you, you said, make that air like, twice i don't you know i don't know i don't know yeah there's also a channel i really enjoy it's a psychology channel where he'll watch through like 10 seconds if even of a of an episode and then he gives this really long informative um, like dissecting of what could be, and it's it's not that he's um, trying to say like these people definitely have this or anything like that. He's really empathetic, and it actually like raises your awareness about why people uh, are the way they are. And that's another reason I like watching the show because then I like watching his basically analysis of human behavior. I think it's really interesting. The drama, <laughs> okay, but but actually. <laughs> Um, Ruth there. Yes, Dr. Honda from Psychology in Seattle. Yeah, you guys know who he is. Yay. <laughs> I love him. I think he's so great and he's so nice. Anyway, that makes me really happy that so many of you know who I'm referring to. He's great. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know the show that he's reacting to, and I'll just listen to him anyway because he's so informative and I feel like the information that he shares is so interesting. But man, when you want him to react to a specific scene, it's like he's probably not going to get to it for a month because he really <laughs> does watch. He'll put up several videos every day, but it it just takes him so long to get. But when he does finally react to the scenes, you're like, ah, yes, yeah, what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> so anyway, OK, so we're going to start our sprint here in just a second. Let me get the screen ready to go. Okay, very fun. Let's see. Are we going to do this? Oh, that's one? a quick okay. sprint. 10 seconds. <laughs> Stop it. Oh. I'm not even sure if Please. I can read a couple panels. Uh, Let me oh. see if I. Okay, make sure it's muted. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. You probably okay. said this uh, before I got here. How long is this sprint? Uh, she didn't it say is yet. Oh, 45 <laughs> minutes. 45 minutes. Copy. Yeah. If you hadn't been making fun of the 10 second thing, you would have seen at the top, it says 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Reading? No comment. Picture book. Pictures. <laughs> okay. We will be doing our sprint. And so we will reconvene in 45 minutes. Are you going to be driving, Roger, listening to your audiobook? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll mute and turn off my camera. Okay. I'm such an idiot. I thought you were asking, like, going to ask me if I was going to be driving. I was like, no, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, not for long. Alex's work is only like 15 or 20 minutes away. So, like, I won't be driving the whole time. But Yes. Okay, fine. So, you're going to hop off. And we'll I mean, I'll leave you. myself connected. I'll just mute. Cool. Okay. Fun time. Okay, we'll see you see in a bit. 45. Okay.
Hello. Is this thing on? It is. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> hey, be safe. <laughs> Is 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 L there? Can you all hear me okay? I can hear you now. I can't hear you, Sean. Hello. I mean I can hear you from behind me, but <laughs> Hello. Hello. I can hear Roger, do you mind saying something? Hello. Yeah, I can hear Roger. Roger can hear me, right? I can. You can hear Sean? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Let me leave and well, yeah, let me leave and come back. Okay. Roger, how was your reading? It's okay. I mean, we're still very early days in this chunky book. What? And it's, we had one of those dramatic moments where somebody that we know seems to maybe have died off page. And I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't, I didn't see the body. Fair enough. Which I one was it again? To... I I should have paid attention. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't have heard of it. I don't think it's Empire of the Damned. It's sequel to a book by Jake. The Christoph. vampire, the Empire, yeah. the vampire one. Yeah. Mm. Did you like it? Did you like what you read? I mean, yeah, it's entertaining. It's very Castlevania esque. Lots of cutting and classic YA stuff. I can hear all of you now. That was very odd. How's your YA book out? <laughs> what mine that I actually feel like is YA. Um, I mean, really not caring for it. <laughs> there's one part where I did this during the sprint with the book, and I realized, like, oh, it's there's the camera on me <laughs> like this. <laughs> Just, uh, I mean, I feel bad because I know so many people really, really love it. There's just a few things that are not working for me, so. But so, there's certain things I can't really say because they they would be too, I think, revealing of plot points. Um, it's to the point where I'm like, ah, I might do kind of a spoiler video for this. Maybe not. We'll see. Oh, you have some real feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I really wanted to love this book, darn it. <laughs> One thing I can say that I don't think it's not spoilery at all, but there is um, an indigenous group of people that live in the area where the battles keep taking place and they call them the indigenous, which are, that's a word for indigenous peoples. And that in and of itself, I'm like, shouldn't they have a name? You know, it's like, they just refer to them as that all the time. But you know, the word like, savage i feel like and then animal like qualities gets tied to them and they look different than the other races but still i'm like eh, i would prefer we didn't do this so much i keep waiting for there to be more like growth with how we view things and i feel like there was one part where i was like oh geez so that's not my favorite part of this book <laughs> that's not really a big plot thing but yeah, so I, I don't love that. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> How is Spy Family, Sean? So good. So I finished funny. I finished that volume. It was so good. Yeah. Sean, when you say it's one of the best volumes, especially with yeah. the part at the beginning. The part yeah. at the beginning so moving, which you read the other day. You didn't read that just now, but Yeah. And then uh the and is just very silly. Big fan. The uh, Sean sent me a couple shots while he was reading. They're pretty funny. Um, took a shower, had some dinner, just trail mix and a glass of wine. <laughs> I mean, I'm often eating like crackers or I don't know, fruit, like these little fruit bars that are basically like healthier pop tarts, you know, but. I eat a lot of snack food just because I'm too lazy to cook. Doom. <laughs> Sean, 
Sean loves Anya. I mean, I, I am love I getting Anya canned? That's good. <laughs> I mean, that just reminds me of Invader Zim. <laughs> so, Roger, when are you going to check out Spider <laughs> Friendship Bye. crash. Friendship <laughs> crash. I mean, we'll probably try the animate. Because I feel like if I have a choice and they're similar stories, I'll tend to watch the anime over reading the manga. They're basically exactly the same. Worf. Oh, Bond. I think you'll find it entertaining. So Bond is... Uh, I really like this because he's trying to impress this lady dog. Because he's a dog. And... Uh, it shows like they have like this little at this dog park, this little balancing beam for the dogs to run on. And it shows him thinking about being kind and supportive as he helps the girl dog across the balance beam. And then she just like runs across it. So he doesn't get I mean, a chance to be kind and supportive. It sounds like maybe you should take a leaf out of that dog's book, Mr. Like hitting your wife and her mother with a pickleball. <laughs> wow. You're right. I just, you're right. I need to be kind and supportive like Bond. I feel like you participating in sprints all the time is, you know, being supportive and nice. Oh, it's okay. I, I learned. You know that. what? I feel like Sean's behavior during sports is totally fine. I feel like his behavior during board games. <laughs> wow. If he's losing, is that uh, maybe a little different? He's leaving. <laughs> uh, we had played Monopoly for last year because I've said before we had theme parties with Connor and Enrique. And for my birthday, it was Sailor Moon. And we had like a Sailor Moon Monopoly and we were playing. And Sean got so mad because he'd been winning. But then I made some deals with okay, Connor and Enrique. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's not even remotely i mean it is but like that's yeah. it's not like you exactly made exactly what happened it's not like you made like smart business deals i did no you did not okay okay i was dominating well, then, in monopoly then and then it's they sad all agreed, that my stupid business deals led to you losing. <laughs> they all agreed to just not charge each other they would only charge me so i had been completely destroying them i had like hotels everywhere and then they're like let's just be friends and only charge sean okay that's not how you play monopoly that's that's not how you play monopoly it's very frustrating <laughs> he's still mad about it too yeah he is i i yeah i would have easily won easily then i just gave up yeah <laughs> alex is <laughs> you want to um... say Hi. Hey, you need to play Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. The baby chocobos are so cute. <laughs> she was saying that you have to play Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth because the baby chocobos are cute. I started it. Then uh Roger on International Nap Day, I think it was, Square Enix shared a because when you sit at these one benches at the Chocobo rest stops, the baby chocobos just like fall over. And then when you're done resting, they stand back up and they're so cute. Um, also, this is for you. Um, do you know what this is, Roger? No, I didn't watch Daria. I mean, I know what it is, but I didn't watch it. Okay, so that's an answer to another people mess up Monopoly with that stupid free parking rule. <laughs> I think we had that in that game. I actually don't know that we did. Did we? I thought we did, and I'm pretty sure you landed on it. I don't remember. Or don't, Connor did, recall. but then Connor was playing where he, because it was Sailor Moon Monopoly, there was a certain character he just really wanted that property for. That's true. And so he was giving Sean all these cards just so he could have that. So you can say all you want, you were dominating, but Connor wasn't playing the game well. <laughs> um, yay! It gets so, I mean, the Spy Family is just fun shenanigans. It's adorable. I don't think, yeah, it's so fun. Except for when it randomly gets really sad. Um, anyway, 
this is fun. I want you and Alex to be able to go enjoy your evening. So <laughs> we'll probably end here. But this was super fun. Thanks for joining. I'm sorry you had to kind of take oh, us no along. Problem. and um, But it was a lot of fun. And I'm thinking next week is... Well, I'm not thinking this. I know. Next week is my birthday. So we might not have a video next week for World Hoppers. I might just take that week off. And then we'll maybe do another sprint the week after. And then we'll be back to videos again every other week. But just letting everybody here know that there might not be a, a, a video next week. But anyway, thanks everybody who joined. For anybody that watches this after, check out merch because all the AdSense from the videos and then the profit from merch goes to charity. So, oh, thanks. I'll be 31. <laughs> um, I found out Christy the other day is older than me and I was like, really? <laughs> I don't know why that funny. shocked me. I would have assumed she was in like her mid to late twenties. Yeah. But anyway, uh, this is lots of fun. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll see you later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>